What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about making snares with Sonic Academy's Kick 2. You're probably wondering, what are you doing? Kick 2 is for kicks. No, I think there's like quite a common misconception that we find quite often in uh, music production is that there's specific plugins for very specific tasks. And that's often not the case. If you just have a set of features that you need for a specific task, you can get so much done with just simple tools. So there's obviously various reasons that make Sonic Academy's Kick 2 really, really cool for drum design. But you can apply this theory to Phase Plant, to uh, instrument racks in Ableton, in Bitwig, to pretty much anything. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So most of the time when I'm making kicks, I will end up going uh, initialize. But this time with the snares, I do kind of want some of the drive distortion and EQ and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not going to bother initializing because I'm just going to start from the default patch. So I guess the kind of main things to be aware of when creating snares uh, with Kick 2 is that we're doing things a little bit differently. The sign is not like the transient or, or the kind of punch of the snare like it is with the kick. This is more like the body. Uh, we're also dealing with quite a different frequency range. So here what I'll usually do is like remove some of these nodes. We generally just need like two nodes and we're generally de dealing with frequencies from about 250 to about 150. So anywhere between, let's say like 150 and 250, you'll get a snare like body sound. So for now we can just set this uh, like this and we can start fine tuning the amp of the sound. So again, like I said, we usually don't go with much uh, sign in the punch of the snare. We want quite a bit of sample or noise to kind of fill in that space. And then we do want um, to be able to control the amount of body in the snare. So we can kind of use this envelope to kind of carve out like a punchy body sound. So already we're kind of like, um, you know, if I just mute any of the other layers, and listen to what we've created, it kind of already sounds a bit like a tom kind of drum. So now we can go ahead and enable this default click again and see what we've done here. What I usually try to do is I try to create like a template and then once I have a template, then we can kind of start getting experimental by creating other samples and loading those in. So I'm just going to leave this click because it sounds nice and snappy. And then what we can do is we can find like a kind of like washy sound. There's actually some stuff here, some snare reverbs, uh, snare reverbs, uh, snare noises and that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool to layer in here as well. So you can hear, we're already starting to get into kind of snare territory. Obviously there's some fine tuning that's gonna to need to happen. And then what I usually have is like an extra layer, which I call like the flavor layer. So this can be anything from like a rattle of like a spring from a snare to any kind of foley sound or anything like that. Uh, we can get really experimental with this layer. So here for now, let's just go ahead and add one of these snare noises or snare rattles. And what we can do is we can enable the visualizer on all three of these clicks. So now we can actually see the waveform of the entire stack, both the sub layer as well as all three of the click layers. So now we can actually go in and fine tune the envelopes of each of these. So with the flavor layer, I usually have mostly in the transient and a bit of the body. I try and not let too much of this bleed into the tail because that kind of tends to make the sound sound a bit less tight. In the tail, you generally just want that verby sound. So we're fine tuning it a little bit here with the envelope. Let's go ahead and fine tune number two and number one as well. So here with the snare verb, you'll notice that there's actually a little bit of length of time before it actually starts. There's obviously like a pre-delay in that reverb setting. So we can counteract that if we want a slightly tighter sound by just using the start parameter over here. This is gonna become important when we start to load our own reverb sounds and that kind of stuff in here as well. So here we're gonna 
kind of move it over to the beginning of the sound, but we want to take a little bit of that snap away by just kind of giving it uh, attack like this. And now we can fine tune these filters over here to high pass them. Okay, so I want to give it a little bit of distortion over here. And how we counteract the sine wave from kind of getting too distorted is by toning down the amp, uh, this envelope over here. And that way it's mainly distorting these and it's kind of lowering the level of the distortion on that sine wave. Okay, so once we have this all in place, uh, I'm just going to kind of default this more a little bit. So let's say, let's say between like 250 and 100. We can kind of play with the frequencies there. We can play with the length. We can load different samples here for different flavors. So here what I want to do is I want to save this as a snare template. I'm actually going to upload this to my Patreon. Uh, for all my $5 supporters as well, um, for those who do have Kick2, but I'm also going to render out a bunch of samples from the stuff that we make. Speaking of which, Kick2 is a really cool thing here where you can just quickly generate an export or just drag it from here into the project as an audio file, which is really, really cool. So it makes these kinds of things really quick for sound assigning multiple snares and then just dragging them all into a folder or something like that. Now let's get a little bit more experimental with the sound sources that we're going to load up in here. Some of the techniques that I like to use are to use Foley sounds uh, to create custom reverbs and that kind of thing. So I've got a pack here from Databroth, uh, Construct, which is just a bunch of Foley sounds which he uh, recorded at um, a construction site, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a bunch of these kind of like industrial kind of sounds. So we can load these up as sound sources here, for example, in the flavor layer. And so also what I like to do is to create, like I said, custom reverb. So we can take like an industrial sounding sound and we can add a reverb to that. So let's just go with something like super massive. So we bounce that and now we can load this back up into kick two. So in between, you actually have to load it from the bottom of the browser over here double click and then load it from here. So let's just drag it into the verb layer. But then here, remember, we're gonna have to change the start to compensate for where it starts in the sample.
So this can be a little bit of a dark art. You know, you're not always going to nail it. So I don't suggest kind of like making the kick for the track that you're working on. Open up a blank project, sit and just craft 100 kicks and then delete like 80% of them. Um, just go through them all the next day and just delete all the trash ones. So now I'm just going to go and spend like 20, 30 minutes just making a ton of snares, even just throwing other snares and playing with those samples and stuff and, you know, seeing what kind of results we can come up with. Um, yeah, anyway, just using this technique, you can come up with tons and tons and tons of different snare sounds by just creating the template, throwing a bunch of stuff at the template and seeing what works. Anyway. Awesome, that's about it for today. I'm going to be uploading a couple of these samples to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. Otherwise, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.